Good day, welcome. My name is Amarenske and today I will be doing a weekly wrap up for last week, which was the beginning of September 2019. Because in the last several months I've read more than enough books that a regular wrap up doesn't work if I want to give my opinions on books. So I have been linking to my Goodreads for the actual reviews instead of giving them in this, these videos. So now in week one of September, I've read three books. I've actually read in more books. I've just finished three of them. So let's start with the topmost in the pile, which is The Wish Granter by C.G. Redwine. I have not read book one in the series. I think this is book two, if I'm correct, but you don't need to. This is just a companion series of retellings of classic fairy tales. In this case, it's Rumpelstiltskin. I didn't know what to expect. I had not expected this book to actually be good. I just expected it to be your regular run-of-the-mill YA novel, but it wasn't. It was a lot of fun. It is very, very well done. And somehow the characters have to find out that their antagonistic character is Rumpelstiltskin. While we as a reader know that basically from the beginning, because that is the whole point of this book, Rumpelstiltskin belongs to the Fae in this novel. I had never thought of it as that in that way, but it actually even makes sense in just a regular fairy tale because he is a magical character and you don't really know where his power comes from, like all fairy tale characters basically. This was very enjoyable. The plot was, in my opinion, very, very well done, very dark too. It dealt mostly with souls and giving and taking souls, which I did and did not expect. Like, I did expect it would deal with that, as in, if you don't hold, hold up to your bargain in the right way or at all, it will have consequences for you and your life and your soul, because that is exactly what Rumpelstiltskin always does. I just had not expected like it like this. I did not expect that I would enjoy this YA novel so much. I had almost just unhauled it without reading it because I thought I was no longer interested in it. I, I'm glad I gave it a chance because it was unexpectedly good. I definitely recommend it and you absolutely do not need to read the other novels in the series to understand this because they are just separate companions to one another and I'm glad I discovered that as well. Let's go on with the second book. By the way, sorry if I look away for a short while amounts of time. It's just that my books are laying on a lower shelf. And I need to watch what I pick up, otherwise the organization might get ruined a little bit. But this is actually the first book I finished this uh, month. This month, but also the week I'm talking about. But the second one I'm talking about, because that's just the way I organize the pile. It's Die Vrouw in die Blauw Mantel by Dion Meyer, which is a book in Afrikaans. In the audiobook app I use, I found the Dutch version of this, and I listened to the Dutch version of this, but I read along in this Afrikaans version, which I bought as a souvenir when I was in South Africa. And I don't regret reading along in this one, because there are puns and such in this that only work if you know a little bit about Afrikaans uh, the culture in South Africa. It's actually set in Cape Town. There capital or one of their capitals because apparently South Africa is like four capitals. I don't know how it works. Um, anywho, it's set in there and you have a very distinctive way those people speak with one another. Part of the people speak English, part of them speak Afrikaans and it's mixed up. Most of the people obviously understand both languages and that very clearly comes across in this book which is done very well and it also makes sense because they just leave the English parts in if they for example call to Great Britain because this is sort of a murder mystery 
type novella, it's, it's very short, it's like 120 pages, where a British tourist is found dead. They don't even know for sure in the beginning if she is murdered or not. So, and they find out, find that out really quickly. And when they call to England, which by the way is only one hour in front of the in time compared to Great Britain. So Great Britain is one hour behind. So they call and basically if it's this day there, it's day in Great Britain, Great Britain too. So the phone gets just picked up and they tell what has happened. It's very easy to conduct interviews. They don't have any struggles with that, but that's realistic. I just found it fun to see what kind of an insight this gives in the culture in South Africa, especially in Cape Town. And it gave me kind of the sort of nostalgia feelings you get when you have been somewhere on holiday and you have experienced it. And it would not have worked the same if I had actually read a Dutch or English version. If you in any way, shape or form watch my videos and can understand both Dutch and English, which obviously you would understand English, but if you can understand Dutch or Afrikaans, I definitely recommend reading it in the original language because it's just the response in that it would not work anywhere near as well in English. They already don't really work very well in Dutch, but at least in Dutch they can leave the English quotes in. If you have the English version, they obviously ain't gonna let the Afrikaans one sit in, but the pun didn't work in Dutch because in Dutch a different word is used for a similar thing. In, for example, in Afrikaans it, ri it rhymes and it doesn't in Dutch. So it had some humor in it as well. It was actually quite a solid mystery, murder mystery story. Enjoyed it very much. I'm glad I bought it actually at an airport. And I'm glad I read it with the help of the Dutch translation. It, most of it is basically the same or at least so similar that you can just understand what's happening. But what did stood out to me is that the Dutch translation has a different breakup in the chapters. The, the chapter headers, the numbers, are put on different places in the chapters, which I've never seen that before. A funny little detail. Still enjoyed it very much. If you can understand Afrikaans or Dutch, definitely give this one a shot. If you are a Dutch person, it might take a little bit longer to read it. You might need to get into it a little bit. But for the rest, definitely a recommend. And now we go for the final book, which is the size and weight of a university textbook. And it's the bind up of Saga volume 1 through 9. When I saw that this was released and it was a lot cheaper than all the separate volumes, I thought, let me grab my chance, because not only was it a lot cheaper to begin with, I could also grab it with a 10% discount on top. Because I was curious why people were hyping this sci-fi so much. It's a science fiction adaptation of Romeo and Juliet, but instead of Romeo and Juliet dying, at least like the way they do in the original, they, the characters don't die, they flee with a baby, they are followed throughout space and you see five years go by and now I get why people hype this story up so much. It's so well done, it discusses so many societal problems, it discusses so many things in general. We have sexuality, being transgender, but also just the ramifications of if you get hunted and are not really safe anywhere, like what that does to you, what it can do to your relationship, and you can see how strong of a relationship these two characters actually have, and how non-judgmental they are compared to almost all the other characters in this world. I think it was very well done. I enjoyed it. I feel like the story in this book has enough of an ending that you don't necessarily need a follow-up 
But if we've got a follow-up, I definitely read it because I'm kind of curious how it goes on. It ends on quite a severe happening. I wouldn't call it a, a cliffhanger per se, but it's not a nice, nice clean ending, which I'm happy with because if this also had a clean ending, I would have definitely not as enjoyed it as much. But these are my reviews for the first week of September 2019. Thank you for watching and ontar care!